word of God. I, I believe today, and if I, if I can get you to do this for me, um, uh, just by a show of hands, um, do you feel like something great is about to happen in your life? Some of y'all didn't move. That's cool, though. I, I, we talked last week about being in transit to your miracle. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes, y'all can follow me. I'm somewhere in, in these things. Uh, scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes that there's a, a time and a place for everything, but I believe it's Ecclesiastes 8. Um, it says that, yes, there's a right time and a way for everything, even though, unfortunately, we miss it for the most part. <clears throat> I really, God, I am so serious. I was talking to Lady J about this um, this week, and I told her that as I had been working on my message, I felt like that this whole series is a preview of what's to come. Like literally, I think tomorrow is like 101, or maybe tomorrow is 100, one of the two. That's how many days we have left in 2019. <coughs> Within that 100 days, we have a complete season that is going to be here fall. I just screamed it at you or autumn, depending on what high school you graduated from. <laughs> then there's going to be another season that's birth in this 100 days, winter. Winter is a microcosm of summer. It's just one is hot and one is cold. Typically nothing grows during <laughs> The blistering cold of winter. Yeah. Just as there's a lot that never grows in the sweltering heat of the summer. But there are two interesting seasons in the year, fall and spring. Now, in these next hundred days, we are about to go through fall. And this is typically the, the, the time of the year that we start talking about harvest time. Because from a farming standpoint, this is harvest time. We, we are about to get ready to go and pick up the seeds or, or the fruit of the seeds from what we planted. There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff going on during this time, though, you know? Uh, Halloween, you know, if you say for real, fall festival. You know. <laughs> <laughs> then you got Thanksgiving, you got Christmas. It's a whole bunch of stuff about to start going on. Some of us about to be scatterbrains. We're about to start already trying to figure out how we're going to buy Christmas gifts and who house we're going over for the holidays. And, I hate to say it because there's so much going on and that's just what's on the calendar I'm not even talking about what's going on in your life some of us are about to miss I believe this opportune time for us to progress so far that we will start to see the manifestation of prophetic words that was supposed to become reality in 2020, they are going to be actualized in 2019. But some of us are about to get so busy, we're about to get so bogged down 
Our calendars are about to get so full. Our planners are about to, our, 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 our iPhone calendars are about to get so overwhelmed and swamped that we are going to miss a season of increase. Wow. <clears throat> By a show of hands, how many people right now could stand to be increased? You can stand it, but I don't. I don't think everybody wants it. Because I think some, for some of us, the bar that somebody else has set for us and told us that this is what success looks like, some of us are cool with that. Just as long as we have a few more followers than somebody else just as long as we can, you know, stun on our baby dad and tell him we don't need his lunch money no more, we good. Oh, come on. I know some of y'all be doing that. Look at what Daquan bought man, man. I got a real man now. I don't need you. Y'all be tripping, man. Girl, boss up and get two pair of shoes on both sides. Just hush. I'm trying to, I'm easing the game in real slow. I hope it didn't go over your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I threw a plug in, girl boss up. That's an amazing fragrance that will help you out. <laughs> that every time you light it, you tell it yourself, girl boss up. <laughs> Some of us don't want increase because we have put a self-imposed ceiling over our head. Because to increase, to stretch, to become bigger, to grow, you're going to have to leave behind some of the stuff that you keep telling everybody else is just you. Because when you increase, God increases your, your, your territory, but he also increases your impact and your influence. And it just doesn't, it, 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 it just doesn't suit you well to increase and be nasty. And so some of us, God will never stretch us because he knows stretching us is going to stress out him. Because some of us, our heads are big and we stay with our mama. So God knows. I'm sorry, man, I was on vacation all week. You know, I, I kind of I had an opportunity to reflect over life. And God is saying, I want to do so much more for you, but the person that you have gotten comfortable with, listen to this, is somebody that was good for you five years ago. Some of us are living in a five-year-old version of ourselves. We're still reacting to the same things that bothered us five years ago. We're still engaging ourselves in meaningless conversations that we had five years ago. We're still trying to get affirmation from people that didn't give it to us five years ago. And we are stuck. But I'm, I'm here to tell you today that God, God, this right now, right now at this moment, God, God is just looking for a few people that he can increase, that he can stretch because the world needs to see on God's children what increase looks like. He can't just he can't just keep he can't just keep having everybody outside the church increase because then what you're gonna start believing is that you don't need him. And that's what kind of is happening, especially in our generation now. Everybody seemingly is progressing and moving forward except those who have a relationship with God. Only because some of us in the church have no clue of how us as children are supposed to be. Why? We hate on people that come to church with us that are progressing. You on Facebook telling Beyonce happy birthday like she gonna see your post anyway. 
but you won't even share your sister's new yeah. business idea. Yeah. Now, she got the beehive, and I promise you, or bayhive, which I whatever they call it, I don't, know, I don't want no trouble. If y'all online right now, please don't share this. I don't want nobody put no bumblebees up under my picture. <laughs> but I pray that God gives you a, 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 a Chantel hive, a, a Natasha hive, a Joshua hive, some people that don't mind buzzing around and telling people how great you are. That's why we got to watch those people that we are around because everybody, it's, it's a lot of people buzzing around you, but they're not buzzing to go carry your message to other people. They buzzing around you because they want to sting you. But they're getting close to you because a bumblebee's, uh, he can't shoot his sting at you. He has to be next to you to get in you. I just want to make sure. I'm, hey, y'all, 10 minutes, man. I'm, I'm done, man. Um, I, I've been working on, I've been practicing. I hadn't hit the, I hadn't, I hadn't hit the, I hadn't hit the bullseye. Forgive me. I hadn't hit the bullseye, but I was looking at one of Chris Brown's shows. Chris Brown danced for an hour and 39 minutes. Man, he was. I was like, that boy's shoulder blade ought to be hurting all that gyrating for an hour and 39 minutes. And I start saying to myself, I say, self, self, say, huh? I say, man, if Chris Brown can dance for an hour and 39 minutes, I definitely can preach the word of God for an hour and 39 minutes. But then myself said, fool, ain't nobody going to be there. <laughs> Church people will watch Chris Brown, but they won't listen to Christ for that long. Don't tell Chris either. You know, he, be, he, he, he a gangster for real. I don't want no trouble. <laughs> but I just want to make sure that I'm giving the message to the right people over these next 10 minutes. Signs you are in transit to your increase. So that's today's message, that I'm in transit to my increase. This is the first sign. I can't stand where I am. Like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative. I'm not ungrateful. Please don't, 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 don't misinterpret it. I'm not ungrateful, but I, 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 I feel claustrophobic in my own house. I feel... I'm just trying to make sure that I'm, I'm uh, over these last couple of weeks, I've been asking, making sure that I'm not just giving, you know, uh, the message to the wrong people. Because this could be for Lakewood. Maybe the Lord has this message for those that, you know. Um, I, but every Sunday, I have had people to come up and say, no, Pastor, are you talking to me? It's somebody in here right now. You, 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 you walk into your house, and this was the same house that you would crunk about getting. But now you walk in, it's like, man, ah. <laughs> you stepping over stuff, ah. And, and you, 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 you've just out, you've outgrown. You tried to go to the container store, but man, they so high, you're like, you know, I'm going to chill for a second. And you're trying to figure out how in the world do I, I, I but I, I'm here, but I, I, I can't say, where did you get that from, Pastor? I'm in Luke chapter 5. The scripture says here, once he was standing on the shore of Lake Gennesaret. Why is it so important? I have to give you this particular backdrop. Jesus is, is on the backside of the Roman Empire. Um, it's, it's in the sweltering, fly-infested, inconsequential land of Palestine. Not Palestine, Texas. Um, I said Palestine a couple of weeks ago, and, and that's where Joshua was from. He came after serving Pastor Jay. Were you talking about Palestine, Texas? I was like, no, nah, man, I'm talking. Oh, okay, man, Josh about to jam me up. It's like, Jesus Christ. So let me make sure I'm talking about Palestine. This is on the backside, um, uh, on the northern remote region of Galilee. It's along the southern part of this, of this 
this lake called Gennesaret. And in this area, because it was so hot and the water made it so moist, it attracted mosquitoes. But because of the moisture, it was a good place to plant. I'm in a decent place, but I don't like my circumstances. I'm here, but I'm only here because I have to be here. Somebody built a box for you and you have been spending your whole life trying to figure out how to get outside of the box. It's like, it's like I'm a frustrated eagle, not a comfortable chicken. Wow. Yeah. I can't even really understand the language of chickens, but I got to be around them. I don't, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out. I, I know that God wants something better for me, and I just can't stand where I am. Okay, so that may not have been for you. This may be the second point. Next slide. Um, um, I'm pushing harder now than I ever have before, but it doesn't seem like I'm getting anything in return. Is that anybody in here? I'm working. I'm at Kinko's. I'm running off coffees. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I can within my own means, but it seems like I, I, I just, I'm working hard, y'all, and I, I, I can't comprehend why I'm not getting back in return what I'm putting out, and it's not just even in the natural. Some of us are pushing harder in relationships. I'm giving, I'm loving, but I'm not getting that in return, and I'm trying to figure out, is this the place that I need to plant? Because for some of you, you, you're at a point where you don't have anything else to give. The crowd was pushing in, but they couldn't get closer. This is point number three, just to see if this is for you. Point number three is, I can see what I need, but it's, I can see it. I, 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 can, I can see it. And matter of fact, it's attainable because somebody else got it. And I know when God did it one time, he didn't just stop doing it. But why does it feel like it's so hard for me to get it? And I'm not even that whiny type person. You know, you just got some people just whine all the time, some always wrong. I'm really good. I work for what I have. I never will beg anybody for anything. But I'm just trying to figure out, God, if you see I'm in a place where I don't want to be, you see how hard I'm working to get out of this place, how hard I am going, how, how hard I'm grinding, and you see, you're showing it to me but it seemed like you're playing a trick on me because I can see it but I can't get my hands on it I'm, I'm, I'm still in the text Jesus was 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 uh, on the shore of Lake Genesaret the crowd was pushing in on him uh, and they wanted to hear the word of God but he couldn't get the word of God to them because it was so many people uh, Jesus was so amazing. Jesus would use the wind as his sound system. So, so Joshua, what he would do is he would get a boat, and, and he would get the boat pushed out. And as he would talk, he would angle the boat in a way. So as he talked, when the wind blew, the wind would carry his voice from the front to the back. Jesus would preach to 20,000 people at a time with no microphone. But he made sure that he was in a place where he could throw his voice so the wind could carry it for him. Right, right, right. Ah, in this season, I need to speak to somebody in here. You're not going to even have to talk loud. God is about to command people to take what you are saying to everybody else. It's an opportunity for increase. So I think in those one, two, and three, by your hands, can you say, yeah, that's me, Pastor Jay. I, I see you back there. I see you. Thank you. If you're online, just start hitting some exclamation points. That's me. <laughs> I want to give you three points. It was really only going to be two, but I had to find three because I just felt like you don't have a good sermon without three points. Right. <laughs> so I got, I, got, I got three. 
God is, and I want you to say this, don't touch your neighbor. Um, man, I was preaching to, them, these, uh, to, to the people at New, New Bethlehem, and uh, man, I was going in. I, I was Pastor Jay in it. I was Pastor Jay in it. Touch your neighbor. And they didn't know if they could do it, you know. Well, let me put your hand on your neighbor. Touch him. I say, man, if you was at the Word Church, man, people be sitting on the stage hollering, preach, Pastor Jay. Hush your mouth and keep on talking. They just say some crazy stuff here. And I told them, I say, man, y'all could be a remote location for the Word Church for the next 35 minutes. I just want y'all to scream and act crazy. And there was a few people that screamed and act crazy. But, you know, they were still kind of reserved. But everybody came telling me afterwards. Oh! But this, this this one old lady, I didn't I didn't get her name. But she she it, I mean she she just grayed out, man. And she told me, because the church was celebrating their 99th year church hey, anniversary. Hey. 99. That's a long time. And the lady came and told me, baby. She said, oh, what I came this morning. My shoulder was so stiff. Felt like I had a knot back there. But I started to clapping when you was preaching. I don't feel nothing now. It's almost right there. I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to lie to you. So I think I wore out all of my touching neighbors. I've used them all up. Because the word increase starts with the letter I. I'm preaching to you. And you need to talk to yourself. Because God is setting up the table for you. I would love for you to encourage your neighbor. But if y'all didn't ride together, you may not ever see them again. But the sad part about it is you may have rolled with somebody that don't want the same thing that you want. So we going to touch ourselves. We're going to talk to ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This first thing, this first thing, as you are in transit to your increase, look beyond your current situation. Amen. Say this, I am, not I am not going to trip, going to trip over, what I see. over what I see. Because, and if I can give this to somebody that can really catch this, this is a prophetic word that's going to hit you in your shoulder blade, so you're going to be like the lady. <laughs> Typically, when God is about to increase you, everything dry up first. I told you it was going to hit somebody. So if you are in here right now and it seemed like you are in a dry season, Somebody get ready, get ready, get ready. Because God is about to increase you. But you can't be tripping over what you see. Mm. Jesus needed this boat. But the boat was a decoy. Jesus didn't care about the boat. He was trying to get something greater. What you think you lost was just a decoy. God was just trying to get something greater to you. Hear me, you will never lose something and God not replace it with something greater. God is not a backtracking God where he's going to take something and then five years later give you what you had back then. You've grown now. Your foot has gotten bigger. Your taste has gotten better. He has to meet you where you are. So if you lost it, prepare to get something back greater than you ever received before. Thank you, ladies. Hey, somebody shout greater. Oh, God, I need to, in that I am summoning greater to come to me. I have just upset mediocrity because I'm tired of you. I don't want to deal with you no more. I have just upset good because good can be good for somebody else. But when I really know who I am and I know whose I am and I've gotten tired of accepting. 
accepting the status quo, I am screaming greater. And I'm waking up every morning. If you offer me a job, you better meet my demands. Because security gonna have to put me out. You slide a paper to me, I'm gonna, oh, greater. When I go to the doctor, and the doctor tell me something that I don't want to hear, oh, greater. I'm not accepting anything that does not meet greatness down the line. Too often those that believe in God are fooled to believe what they see. And too often we think because the situation is what it is, we believe that it will always be what it has been. But if we want the best that God can offer, we need to trust God and believe increase is possible. Jesus comes, he used the boat. Uh, verse 4 says, and when he had finished speaking, he told Simon, all right, bro, um, for your generosity, instead of putting your boat up, uh, let's go out where it's deeper. Yeah. I want to I, I show you I appreciate you for allowing me to use your boat. You ain't asked for no money, but I just, I want to show you that I appreciate you helping lift me up. The Bible said that when you lift me up, I'll drop. Simon did not, oh, hope somebody hear this. Simon did not ask, Jesus offered. This increase, you didn't even know what to ask for. But what God is offering you is about to be mind-blowing. And the reason why you didn't know what to ask for is because Jesus went into year 2025. And he's coming back offering it to you in 2019. You haven't got to 2025 yet, so you didn't know that you needed it. But he said, let me get it to you now, so then when you get to 2025, I have to give you what you would have got in 2035. That's the way God acts. He does not give you what you need right now. He gives you what you have to grow into. And if you're feeling some pain right now, it's just growing pains. I'm just growing into the manifest destiny that God has on my life. Woo. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God said not only can't everybody go with you, everybody can not grow with you. Uh, he tells Simon, come on, man, let's go out. But he didn't say, let's hang around up front where it's shallow. Come so, on, let's go a little deeper. I think that's where God is stretching some of us. He's taking us deeper. You've gotten all you can get on this shallow level. You've gotten all you can get from them shallow people. God say, I need to take you deeper. Uh, and when you get deeper, survival is key because you've never been this deep before. So you don't have time to address things that's happening on the shore. Let the shore handle the shore. I am in the deep. Uh, if the phone call is not telling you notification received, some of you need to ignore it. If the phone is not telling you that there has been a deposit placed, some of us need to ignore it. Because some, some people are depositing stuff in your bank fraudulently. And they're causing for your account to be overdrawn. They're overdrawing your peace. Every time they deposit something in you, you end up being upset. You end up being all over the place. There is something that happened at, at, at the bank that I bank at. You remember it kind of upset us one day. Capital, uh, no, it was Chase, Chase. Uh, Chase wouldn't even receive our cash deposit without showing identification. And it, it, it upset me. Uh, I can see if you're making all these, 
all these changes if I had a check. Oh, but I got big faith hundreds. <laughs> it was only one, but I had, I, I spoke it into existence. His cousin is on the way. identification. They said, because not on your account, but many of our customers have discussed about fraudulent activities on their account. So every transaction, we need to have proper identification. I speak to you today. There have been some people that you thought were comrades and they were just customers. And they have been making fraudulent withdrawals and deposits. But God is saying, I am stopping every transaction from this point on to protect your future investments. Listen to this, because I cannot afford for this season of increase to be tainted because the wrong person had access to your account. He tells, he tells Simon, let's go out in the deep. Simon say, um was, um, um, say, um, I, I apologize, bro. I know you, you're a carpenter. This ain't really, this ain't really your area. Man, we done been out here all last night. We ain't catch nothing. It really is Simon implying what happened yesterday is still happening today. Oh, I know y'all didn't look at the text like that, but he said we worked past him. Hard all last night and did not catch a thing. You are looking at your current situation in a lens that is focusing on what has happened. You're not looking at your current situation with the lens of what will happen. That's why the Hebrew writer says that no one can please God without faith. If God is going to stretch you, if God is going to increase you in this moment, listen to this, listen to this, please hear me. I don't want anybody's testimony to become yours that does not show God being God. Yeah. Oh, because people testify. And their testimony sometimes ain't what you need to hear. Yeah. Oh, it's a testimony when somebody say, girl, ain't no good man out here. They're testifying based off of what they've seen. And now their testimony is now making you feel like Somebody's testimony said, man, ain't nobody doing that primary stuff. Ain't, ain't, ain't nobody making no real money. That's their testimony. So now it makes you fearful to step out and really go after your goals because you're looking at people who did not win, who did not succeed. But for every person that didn't succeed, there's one that did. This is my second point. This was supposed to be the end of the sermon, but I told y'all I found three. The second point is, take him at his word. Touch yourself. Don't talk. Now, the only, only reason why I want you to touch your neighbors is if your neighbors sleep, because that's unfair for them to be sleep in the church. <laughs> they sleep, wake them up! <laughs> I can only see past these first, those first two rows, so I don't know if y'all sleep or not, but I just, <laughs> just wanted to do it for precautionary reasons. Now, touch yourself and say, I need to take God at his word. <laughs> keep talking regardless of what it looks like I'm going to take God at his word yeah yeah so I, I need you to speak this I need you to start training yourself and just I need you to tell God right now God I, I, I believe you God I trust you I know you're gonna do it because you said it. that's it that's it that's it that settles it or at least it should settle it 
is crazy, man. I saw this at the top. Sister Bronson, I know you can appreciate this. I was talking to the, to the church that I was at, and I was telling them, I say, man, I know this church is 99 years old. I say, man, but, you know, back, back in the day, 99 years ago, parents could do stuff that us parents can't do now. Man, if, if you got a church that's 99 years old, you could literally put your child in the chokehold in church and put them to sleep and nobody would say nothing. Now y'all want to fight the ushers if they ask you to take your baby outside from crying. Your baby been crying since 1215. It's 1250. Like the people in the back are tired of seeing you rock. They getting seasick. Come on, baby, gonna do something. He ain't gonna stop crying. Is he hungry? You need to change him. You've been sitting on assignment. The devil is in you. Go outside. <laughs> Nowadays, it's different. But this is what Jesus did. Look, look at this. Sir, Jesus asked Simon, hey, say, man, take the boat out in the deep. Let's go fishing. He's like, nah, bro, we've been out here all night, and we ain't caught nothing. Jesus didn't even interrupt him. I'm going to let you go on and keep speaking a curse over the ground that I'm trying to fertilize. Oh, Lord. Can you, just, can you just ask God, God, in those moments when I'm tripping, don't wait till I get through talking. Tell me to hush. Because, see, I'm afraid that if I keep on talking, I'm going to start seeing what I said. Yeah. And if you're not speaking in faith, you don't want to see what you said in fear. You don't want to see it. You, I don't even want to see what I said in fact. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I don't have enough money for this. I don't want to see it. I am abundantly overflowing with all of the resources that I need. So when he stopped talking, Jesus was like, okay, I say it. <laughs> Just like a good daddy. All right, I say it. Go out into the deep and let down your nets. But Simon answered, see, first of all, Simon talking too much. Shut up! We have toiled all night long and caught nothing. But then there's a shift that happens in the text. Yes. Yes. Shift says, nevertheless, at your work. Oh, Jesus. Now, when you do that, you have put the responsibility of increase on him. Yeah. I'm going to go out there and do my part, but this is going to have to be on you. God is asking some of you all, just show up. Even if you got to show up with a nevertheless in your spirit. Somebody need to put that on your shirt, nevertheless. I'm tired, but nevertheless. They told me no, but nevertheless. I know I don't qualify for it on paper, but nevertheless. I don't have enough money for it, nevertheless. I know what they're going to tell me about my biggest score, but nevertheless. Because his word said, when you take him at his word, his word is able to do what only he can do. And I am here to tell you that when a word comes from heaven, the word cannot go back to heaven for it has to complete its assignment. Everything that has been spoken over your life, if God say that you are healed, you have to be healed. If God say that you are the lender, you have to be the lender. If God say that you are the head, you have to be the head. I don't care what it looks like, nevertheless I'm your word. Nevertheless, at your word. This is my third point, and I'm done. Whatever you do, don't stop doing. Whatever you do, don't stop doing. 
whatever you do, don't stop doing. Man, it's hard. I don't even like math. I'm 39 years old in a freshman class. And? Man, you know, no hate on nobody, but man, I've seen some of these people lately. Some of them look like they graduated with us, so you'll fit right in. If you don't tell your age, they won't know. Keep your mouth closed. Hush, hush. Whatever you do, don't stop doing. You cannot increase. Listen to this. You cannot become greater if you stop. Some days will be better than others. But don't let that bad day stop. I'm speaking to somebody in here who has been threatening to stop. Every entrepreneur, let me speak to you in here because it's somebody that needs you to keep going because they need a job. As an African American, African Americans employ the most African Americans. You, you're trying not to stop because you don't want to have a boss. Somebody else needs you not to stop because they need you to be their boss. When you start seeing what God sees, Whatever you do, don't stop doing. Whatever it is you're doing, don't stop doing it. Yeah. And that day when you don't have no clients, that day when it's not coming through, you better be promoting your stuff like your life depends on it. Right. I'm building up for tomorrow. Man, I'm preaching to somebody in here because what happens in that day, you have the power to manipulate the emotional expression you have that day. Either I'm going to let the day beat me or I'm going to beat the day. Don't stop doing. When they had done so, when they had done, God is going to increase you in the doing. When they had done, hallelujah, somebody in here, God is saying, you ain't got, you're trying to find something else to do. And God is saying, just do what you have been doing. Just, if I can just, Luke, if I could just take it to where we come from. If I could just take it to the stand. Just, just do what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just do what you do. You toiled past tense. It did not work then. But God is saying, I need you to get back. Right where you were, because that's why everything else you've tried to do in the middle, it ain't working. And you've been tripping, looking at yourself in the mirror, thinking there's something wrong with you. It's nothing wrong with you. You're just doing something that you weren't called to do. And you stopped doing what you were called to do. You stopped doing what you were called to do because you felt like what you were called to do wasn't giving you the results that you, you wanted to see. Hmm. Prior to Jesus, bless you, Holy Ghost, prior to Jesus coming to Simon Peter, the Bible says that there were other people that were there with Simon Peter that had gone who had toiled themselves and didn't catch nothing. And the Bible says that they went and washed their nets and went home. But there were some people that stayed. It possibly didn't work the last time because you had people around you that would give up too quick. Who am I talking to? The people that you need to be connected with in this next season need the people, need to be the people that were down with you when there was a drought. I don't just need people around me doing income tax season. I don't need people around me just when the business is popping. I need people around me when I'm down to my last dime and we scraping a few dollars together to go get a hot and ready and we gonna see this thing through because we believe at some point our increase is going to come. wanting to increase with people who left you when you were in a season of decrease. Because what is about to happen 
now. It's not just going to bless you, but it's going to bless everybody that stayed. The Bible said that when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. And it says, so they signaled their partners in the other boat, come help me. And when they came and filled both boats, it was still so full that they almost began to sink. See, that's why God can't bless you right now. Because he knows what I'm trying to do for you is going to be so overwhelming that even the people that's around you are going to be blessed. And God said, I can't allow a hater to be blessed on your watch. And let us not be weary in well doing. Whatever you do, don't stop doing. Because in due season, and that word do, that word do suggests that something has come full term. It is do. It's like a mother that's pregnant. How many mothers we have in the house? Hey, y'all, happy Mother's Day. I say every day is Mother's Day, man. Y'all, 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 y'all do it, man. Y'all do it, you know. But when the time is right and the doctor has identified that you are carrying, they give you a due date. Sometimes it may be a little bit before, it may be a little after, but it gives you a general assessment of the time so you can prepare for what's to come. And God is saying today that for those that are here and hear my voice, you have just stepped into your due season. That what has been prophesied to you, that thing that has been promised to you, it's yours. But you can't look at your current situation you have to take him at his word. And whatever you do, don't stop doing. Let us bow. God, we love you. We bless you. Wow. What an amazing experience we just had at the Word Church. I'm so excited that God has allowed us the opportunity to bring the word to you wherever you are. We have people that watch us all across the globe, and I'm thankful that we have come to you. I'm asking you to do one of three things. The first thing that I want you to do is share this message with somebody else. We never know. The people that we are in contact with may be one word away from their life shifting. Share it with them today. This could be the word that saves their life. The second thing that I want you to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure that the next time that a word comes from the word church, you're the first to know. And lastly, if you're in the city of Houston or surrounding areas, make sure to visit us at TWC. It is an experience that you have to experience yourself to believe it. All right. Well, I pray that the word of God that you heard today blesses you beyond measure. Take this with you. Apply it in your life and be all that God has called you to be. God bless you.